Pakistan Navy under the patronage of Ministry of Maritime Affairs is organizing the first ever International Maritime Exhibition at Karachi. The exhibition will bring together stakeholders and companies from diverse maritime fields to exploit the potential of the blue economy. The three-day exhibition will provide an opportunity for B2G and B2B interactions, joint ventures and investment in maritime sector. A maritime conference will also be conducted during PIME in which eminent speakers, experts and reps from public and private sectors will share their views on maritime investment potential in Pakistan. Premier edition of PIME, co-organized by Badr Expo Solutions and Pakistan Navy under the patronage of Ministry of Maritime Affairs, Government of Pakistan. Pakistan International Maritime Exhibition and Conference will be held from the 10th till the 12th of February 2023 at Karachi Expo Center. Assalamu alaikum, you're watching News and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Now, Pakistan to organize first International Maritime Expo and Conference in February 2023, first of its kind. And interestingly, now uh, what we have learned about it, that uh, it is more about exploring the maritime potential. Now, uh, since we all know that uh, when we talk about the four provinces of Pakistan, so I happened to meet a few of the naval officers and they said, no, we have got five provinces. One is the sea which we have, 1,000 kilometers of our coastal line and almost 290,000 square kilometers of the area. Uh, that is around uh, the area if you combine Punjab and KV together. So you can well imagine the kind of potential you're talking about. Once upon a time, Pakistan had the biggest shipbreaking setup in Ghadani. Now, the potential is still there, but much hasn't been done. So most likely, these sort of exhibitions and expos really give a boost to the ideas which still prevail in that particular part. So. To talk about it, let me quickly introduce you to our panelists. We have with us in our studio on my right is Air Vice Marshal, uh, re retired Ajaz Malik Saab. Thank you very much, Malik Saab, for, you, yes. for your presence, sir. And we also have with us Dr. Nuzat Khan Saiba, former DG NIO. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your availability as well. And uh, we have with us Dr. Professor Zafar Nawaz Jaspal Saab, expert on foreign affairs and international relations. Dr. Saab, pleasure to have you in the show. And uh, we have been joined in by uh, Nagmana Zafar Saiba, Senior Researcher, NIMA. Uh, she is going to join us on Skype. Pleasure to have you, ma'am. Thank you very much for your Thank time you. as well. Thank but let me put the first question to you, sir, Revim Saab. Pakistan has a lot of potential as far as maritime is concerned and um, the kind of exercises uh, with so many different countries that we have witnessed, the kind of potential that uh, the Navy has shown. But obviously, the, the civil side, or let me put it this way, the private sector should also pull in because it is not only the job of the military or the men in uniform to look after the affairs and especially explore the financial potential of the area. So, so let's start off from this very important point that uh, when we talk about this particular ex exhibition or expo uh, or conference for that matter, what exactly do we need to derive out of it, number one, and what sort of an objective uh, which has been set uh, as far as the achievement is concerned? Thank you very much, Faisal. As you have mentioned yourself, that uh, our uh, potential for uh, our sea frontiers or coastal belt, let's say, it's more than 1,000 kilometers. Then we have our territorial waters, then exclusive economic zones, and then the continental shelf. So only in our exclusive economic zone, more commonly known as EEZ, we have 240,000 square kilometer of area where we exercise and enjoy the full freedom to explore it for any activity starting from the surface down to the bedrock of that sea. All right. So it contains, um, you know, aquaculture, it contains marine ecology, it contains, you know, the shipping which goes through it and the uh, uh, natural resources or mineral resources including the energy, huge energy resources that we have in this area which is under our control. All right. So uh, coming now after having given this uh, geographic, uh, you know, description, now what has happened that over the years, Alhamdulillah, Pakistan Navy has emerged a regional, you know, uh, you know Navy which has fought wars, which have conducted exercises, and they have shown their, you know, four dimensions of operations uh, in their area of responsibility in Indian Ocean region. Uh, but 
somehow because the other institutions which were you know coming up like we had a very good shipping industry if you recall your youth time or at least my youth time you are still young uh, that pnsc uh, uh, used to be a national flag carriers there would be a huge you know uh, uh, shipping industry mm -hmm. now we are hiring you know ships from foreign uh, registered firms that industry has gone down and then we have not exercised enough for the allied industries be it fishery be it hmm. other industry which are you know otherwise traditionally the bread and butter of our local folks who are residing along the coastal line so navy i must appreciate that navy has instead of only enjoying that people have you know mixed up maritime world maritime with naval uh, and navy was enjoying that privilege being you know understood as you know custodian of all mm. maritime interest along with the naval interest this ini initiative has been taken by pakistan navy itself that they want that it should be put up in the correct perspective where maritime domain is far greater and its scope is far outreaching as compared to the mere defense application through pakistan like water sports for that matter that's exactly. an amazing uh, so uh, so that concept, is yeah? so looking at this uh, initiative i think it will introduce pakistan to the international market we will come on the radar of uh, multiple you know facets of industries yeah. and ec uh, economic uh, you know uh, areas or vistas which are associated with maritime sector all right now coming to you ma'am uh, ma'am uh, particularly let's also uh, talk about this particular conference that was held today in islamabad uh, so basically ma'am uh, the idea is to have this particular exhibition or conference in uh, 2023 february so ma'am uh, you have got plenty of time now to gear up and just come up with various ideas do brainstorming session and you know be creative what exactly do you have in your mind when you talk about this particular uh, concept ma'am before i elaborate it for the day or for the upcoming even what we are going to how we are going to celebrate what we are mm. going to do that let me introduce a bit on the blue economy perspective in pakistan definitely this concept is is nothing new in pakistan is in around the world the resort, the importance of ocean is very well established since men on this planet Uh, we try and travel trade by sea yes the first navigational chart was established in early 70s that means the relationship of the blue con the economy the blue economy and the mankind is started not today is since long that means first navigational started in 70s and then uh, the exploration of uh, food charged off in it happened in early 80s mm -hmm. that means the exploration of blue economy is as old as mankind on this planet and is part of the development activities as well because the fossil fuel which are which we are burning in our engines either engine at, in the, the car or in in industries they all are drive and driven from oceans the fossil fuel that means the blue economy means the ocean is the backbone of all entire economy of the world that's the backbone the buzz word we call as the blue is something very new in that but utilization and uses mm -hmm. of that ocean is very very long we need wh why we are looking at the ocean why we are talking about the blue economy and the ocean because we consume most of our land resources now we are starving for the resources for development now we are looking at the sea how we can harvest how we can make use of the ocean for sustainable development and for that the pakistan or maybe badr expo in collaboration with ministry of maritime affair and the and naval headquarter they are trying to showcase pakistan blue economy prospective mm -hmm. this is really going to be very interesting we are planning to start some kind of uh, the business based solutions for the our oceans okay there are potential for green energy there are potential for like food scarcity like the high protein foods are there aquacultures offshore aquaculture cage cultures and this is very important to develop in pakistan because we have to address and the, and the, the food potential scarcity. from the seafood basically yes, that is, is one not, of the best in the world it's not just export hmm. is the local consumptions as well because our coastal areas are really struggling with the the quality food is a good protein food the ocean, the fish is basically providing them a good quality protein food which is really very essential for us for our growth 
and export as well. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of commercial markets as they were. Because we are just stuck up with very traditional seafood, it's like fish. But there's a two, more than 200 species, Different species 200,000 yes. mm. species are there. Mm -hmm. It's the richest uh, forum, richest domain is the biodiversity is in the ocean. Uh, so there's a food, uh, there is um, energy, there is water scarcity, that means we have to look for the seawater sea uh, uh, sea des desalination. And the basically ocean is connecting, it's not just connecting continent to continent, it's connecting to culture to culture, trade to trade. Mm. So it's going to be a like B2B business. It's Perfect. going to be international. All right. So we are looking forward for B2 business in that forum. Now coming to you, sir, let's talk about the aspect from the international relations. Because, sir, when we talk about the roots, obviously starting from, if you let's start off from the Far East all the way to Middle East or further down, and then um, gateway to Europe for that matter through the Suez Canal and all. Now, so the point is that uh, there was a time when, as I earlier also mentioned and Abim Sab also talked about it, that we had the best uh, shipbreaking uh, set up in Pakistan and Ghadani. And I happened to s talk to one of the former uh, uh, naval vice chiefs and he said that, you know, the kind of potential that exists there is we have got no idea even now. But we could have done so much, for example, uh, this oil tanker repair or uh, for that matter, you know, uh, whatever tra trade is taking place, you know, for example, ships are coming uh, with the oil and on the way back we can repair them and, you know, there is a huge multi-billion dollar industry. Let's also talk about that, sir. Your, your take on it. Uh, Faisal, when we look about the maritime potential, economically, politically or military, it is there. And Pakistan is one of the most important stakeholders, being a literal state of the Arabian Sea becoming a Indian Ocean. Now what you have referred, if you see, I can give you a very simple example. Officially they say that we pay a freight of 3 billion. We have a 3 billion freight market. No, actually it's 8 billion uh, Eight. freight market in Pakistan. And Pakistan's own you can see ships which are only eight in number and they are not cargo and they are only you can say having a share ten percent because they were eight to nine ships so ninety percent the it's other outsourced. Or, or outsource and others are making the money this is number one second is that Pakistan is a agri, agri products exporter like currently mangoes or the you can say in the coming season, citrus and the other products. Now, when you don't have your own shipping line, which is starting from here and moving on, then naturally you are relying on the others. So these agriculture products, life line is three, four, ten, whatever you can look at it is, it is also dangerous. So Pakistan need in the last, since 1970, unfortunately, I can say that there was a sea blindness. Recently, even I, uh, I guess as last two years, yes, we were hearing Aman exercise organized by the Pakistan Navy or NEMA or XYZ, but this is first time they are coming up with a big, not only with a vision, but execution. And today, when Defense Minister and Maritime Minister or the Naval Chief, when they launch this, uh, you can say soft launch, that generates a hope. The hope that Pakistan is on the right direction. But the problem in this context is still the policymakers are policymakers seems unaware what is the maritime potential. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you heard a number of times they talk about uh, ec uh, free economic, uh, you can say they give a tax exemptions in the economic zones. They talk about the uh, certain areas tax and why not they are giving the this kind of a exemptions to the maritime industry. We have a three big ports, oh, Agreed, Karachi, Qasim and Gawada. And if you can give this, you have a 70 percent, let's say you are having a tax on them. Earlier they said that we are coming up with the maritime policy and if the ship and, and if somebody wants to register an industry here, they will be exemption, but they started again putting the 17 percent. I know that is not an attractive. There are many other parts of the, in the world which are making attractive. Even a Pakistani businessman is investing there. Their flags are, uh, you can say, shining on Pakistani business, uh, 
ship owners mm. rather than a Pakistani flag shining. So there is a need, a vision, and this vision is uh, it required a proper, you can say, hammering on this idea and convincing the policy makers that look, you have a eight billion without plus, fare, why not you can tap on it? You have a, uh, you can say, two provinces bigger land, why you are not going to identify? If you see these small state, island states, they have a surplus. Why? Because they introduce the tourism. But if you are starting from, uh, you can say, Karachi and with the coastal line going up to Gwadar, uh, there are many places. Why? It becomes very Some attractive. So beautiful. And Pakistan is a full of tourism. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to develop them, secure them, generate an impression if you are coming here. And if, as you know that, uh, if you count, if one tourist, if he comes, how much he generates the industry? Your hotel industry, your, uh, you can say traveling, food traveling industry, it, yes. your food industry, your work because industry. the individual so, has to disposable because, uh, income. The yeah, problem here is that uh, we are still living in a traditional mode. We are still thinking about a traditional security. So now it's time for innovation. Yeah, you are, uh, and innovation is and, and, there. And luckily, we have uh, all the resources available. Mm -hmm. So with that context, if we can use this kind of a thing, it will be definitely boosting our economy, boosting our influence in the region, at least in the NEMA, uh, Indian Ocean, and strengthening in a way, because when you have a, this kind of economic activity, even not for a, for a, you can say, protecting it from the different threats, you, have, you are going to invest in your Navy as well. And the Navy budget will be moving on the private sector so indirectly. So gets connected and everyone, you know, has that win-win kind of a situation. Yeah, so now, you so need a strategic vision. Or exactly. Now coming to you, ma'am, uh, since uh, Dr. Sab just mentioned uh, this strategic issue, uh, it is generally believed and historically that uh, even a lot of uh, Chinese philosophers used to say that whoever controls the Indian Ocean controls the globe because you're talking about the trade route, you're talking about the uh, oil route. But, but, but having said that, ma'am, the strategic importance of this particular area, and you are talking about an area which is much bigger uh, than uh, Punjab and KP put together. Now, when you talk about uh, the seafood industry, it is believed that over $2 billion worth of exports uh, could be generated. Uh, but since there are issues, there are problems of uh, storage and a couple of other as well. So then let's talk about the strategic importance. I mean, uh, this collaboration, this uh, uh, private sector and the, let me put it this way, the government, obviously the uh, Navy is definitely a very important uh, arm of, of our uh, forces. So when, when we say that, I mean, that collaboration, that uh, synergy, let's talk about that. Um, Faisal, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, G. We can all hear you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so, um, uh, first of all, uh, very aptly, uh, as the panelist has highlighted, as the panelists have highlighted uh, the various hurdles which we have uh, in uh, addressing the true potential of uh, the country. But, um, and as uh, you have uh, identified a question that, uh, how this uh, B2B and how this pub private public partnership will be, you know, uh, helping us through this event. I would like to share with the audience that this specific event, Pakistan International Maritime Exhibition and Conference, it is an effort by Pakistan Navy, uh, Ministry of Maritime Affairs, and National Institute of Maritime Affairs to uh, take all this uh, uh, maritime potential of the country to a step further. It's, it's not about identifying the potential or creating awareness. Through this event, we are more focused on providing the means to the people so that they can, you know, earn uh, through the seas and they can make out of it. We need to equip them through a uh, right form of skill set. We need to equip them through uh, the right uh, uh, technological uh, advancement we do have and the scientific research we do have. So uh, this exhibition and this conference will not only help us to collaborate and bring all stakeholders together uh, to for the knowledge sharing, 
for capacity building, for identifying the collaborative gaps where we can work together, not only at the national level, but also at the regional level. Uh, it is very important to learn from the regional states. We were talking about the tourism, we were talking about the fisheries, and uh, the panel has also highlighted um, about the ship breaking and ship building. Uh, now the time uh, has arrived when we need to work with the regional and international collabor collaborative partners and we need to learn from the success stories. We can uh, learn from them, we can apply those success stories in Pakistan and we can always uh, seek support from the government so that we can tell them that what are the key things we need to apply here in Pakistan. So this PIMEC is an effort by Pakistan Navy uh, Ministry of Maritime Affairs and of course NEMA to uh, bring to uh, bring on board all the private and public stakeholders and we will be having technical sessions, we will be having academic sessions and we will be having special sessions for business community so that we can sit together and we can talk about the issues and we can talk about the way forward. All right, now coming to you sir. Uh, when we talk about this potential that the maritime has and it's uh, it's i mean it's to, it's just like as if the more you explore the more uh, you you'll get to know about it i was just thinking about two three countries for example uh, sir uh, norway for that matter i mean a very rich country but really got uh, financially so strong because of the uh, offshore uh, uh, availability of uh, oil and gas great you talk about uh, Libya, for that matter. They have their own. But sir, when, it, when it comes to Pakistan, uh, do you think that the potential is there? But unfortunately, the exploration part uh, wasn't, unfortunately. Otherwise, I, I still remember there was this artificial island that uh, popped out of the sea and uh, uh, close to yes. Karachi, if you remember. And yes. there, the people had lit and there was fire. So what I'm saying is, sir, you God knows what we have but we do not know. Exactly. Uh, first, uh, two very brief comments about our uh, fellow panelists. Uh, Dr. Jaspal just mentioned uh, that why uh, people are not taking interest. I think one reason is that our policy makers, mm -hmm. they do not have an education or they do not have awareness about our sea resources. Perhaps because, both. Because they are not exposed. They, I mean, all are, you know, uh, policy making, decision making is in Islamabad centric and there will be people who have never been to a you know, uh, coastal area even for that matter. So this is a lack of awareness one thing. And second thing I would like to just comment in addition to uh, Pakistan Navy taking major share for this uh, event and then Ministry of Maritime Affairs and NEMA. Uh, I am very glad that uh, a professional uh, private uh, sector organization uh, Badr Expo they are going to handle this event. Uh, they have a huge experience. They have been, you know, conducting uh, Pakistan's premier and international standard ideas for ages now. So they have the experience for arranging the events and making the B2B connectivity. So I am very optimistic about the success of this show. Having said that, uh, now I will briefly touch upon the uh, phenomenal, uh, you know, economic activity which we can generate immediately in, in terms of tourism. Just look at Sri Lanka, look at Maldives. Maldives is generating 2.1 billion being just a small, uh, you know. One of the, the most uh, expensive uh, resorts, resorts that they have. Then Seychelles. Today some, one speaker. Seychelles you know, Islands, yeah. Yeah. He is, uh, you know, somebody mentioned, quoted uh, their uh, uh, minister for tourism. He said that we are not a country with a small island state. We are a country with a huge sea available to us. So that is the perspective how you see yourself and then how you apply. Unfortunately, in tourism, we haven't even explored our north properly and not exploited that to generate um, uh, foreign exchange. South is always neglected. Whereas even for domestic tourism, uh, because domestic, of weather, now religious tourism. Because of weather conditions, north is not available to everybody around the year. So the times once north is not available, you we can, can divert that traffic to the south. Absolutely. So it will generate yeah. activity for Pakistan Railways, mm -hmm. it will generate activity for Pakistan International Airlines and all other transportation. It will help people build new hotels. Once the demand will be there, for, people will build better hotels. So 
we can generate so much out of uh, uh, this coastal tourism that I think uh, it's unimaginable because the small countries that I mentioned, if they can do that with planning and with you know sustainable models, you need to have a vision for that, right, sir? And that should be a strategic vision mm -hmm. that we have. And there should be consistency as exactly, far as the policy is concerned. Consistency of policies, and it should not be taken as one government's initiative and rolled back once the regime changes. It should be taken as a state-owned initiative and it should be seen in the perspective of 10 to 15 years and we can just uh, do that. And another thing uh, from overall economy point of view, uh, people do, are not aware what sea lines of communications are, yeah. what is their vitality to our national interest. So we yeah. have to create that awareness yeah. through the sideline conferences, the you know breakaway conferences uh, uh, in this particular event. Right. So that is the focus and I think uh, starting from our today's uh, uh, you know, launch uh, of the event and the kind of response and patronage we have to, had today mm -hmm. from government and the Pakistan Navy and other institutions. I am very positive, inshallah, uh, this is going to be a stepping stone for, you know, enormous potential, uh, harnessing those enormous As potential. As I say, you know, it's always the first step. Exactly. Uh, at the end of the day, I am very look positive. at any success story, sir. I am not talking about another very important aspect. Um, uh, Iranian... Uh, President, when he was Pakistan, in, was in Pakistan, I remember, and uh, there were a couple of uh, journalists along with him. So, you know, we, we had some candid chat, and I, I remember uh, they said that um, this Chabahar, because, you know, whenever we, we talk about Chabahar and Gawadar, we always think that they have some sort of a disconnect and perhaps rivalry. He said, no, they will complement each other, especially Chah Bahar is going to complement. Now, uh, they had their own reasons to convince me. But man, what I'm saying is that uh, look at Dubai model. Look at uh, Muscat used to be another uh, center. Uh, now you're talking about Chah Bahar. A lot of investment has been done. And I was again surprised to know the other day, ma'am, that money uh, that China had uh, promised to invest in Iran, 400 billion in the next 25 years, the gentleman which already is very used to having a good infrastructure in their country, Iran I'm talking about. He said, you will not believe the kind of infrastructure the Chinese have built. There's so many Chinese all around us. Now Gazprom is again coming in, investing $40 billion recently, we got to know. What I'm saying is, ma'am, looking at Iran and the money pouring in, don't you think that is going to be a challenge for all these ideas? Most uh, probably what you said is, is somewhat correct. Uh, but our... Uh, geopolitical situation is totally different and internal, in, internal politics totally different. You know, uh, the countries around the world, they invest in blue economy, they invest in ocean. That's why they, they developed. In early 80s, they developed this, developing the underwater cables, submarine cables, and we were just trying and built up the stories and the buildings. But we have to invest whatever the our regional or international community they are doing. Mm -hmm. They have all the right to develop. And we have our right to develop. And for the development, we need to invest in our ocean and ocean resources and harnessing of the oceans. If Chabahar, we can't stop them to develop. We have to make sustainable strategies to develop ourselves. The Chabahar project, if I'm not wrong, it was about to come, maybe it was proposed to Pakistan as well. It's like CPAC in Pakistan. It's Gawadar. But it's still the Gawadar development, again, in a, in a process of development. It's not yet developed. So we need to develop our domains very wisely, very strategically, because nationally, interna internationally, regionally, the people, they are investing in ocean and ocean resource harvesting. So we have to develop in our domain what we need to develop, you know. The Makran coast is rich in many, many minerals and other industrial products as well. As you mentioned, the piece of island is raised up and it's like a swan. It's not in Karachi, it's this basically Makran. Makran. The close entire to Makran, no, it's, it's close to Gavadar. Entire Makran coast is rich in sixth generation fuel is gas hydrate. If the pressure of gas hydrates is built up and the piece of land is not just once, it's three times. Obviously. Yeah, this is I because there's a lot of resources. And uh, with the help, as uh, CNS, CNS has mentioned in his speech uh, during this um, 
launching ceremony of that uh, with my institution, National Institute of Oceanography in China, Geological Survey, we mapped out our resources there. We have great potential for six generation fuel, not just fuel, gas hydrate, other resources as well. These are there. With that, we have enough potential for aquaculture, we have enough potential for tourism, we have enough potential for energy. And the transportation and the shipbuilding, uh, as you mentioned, is the ship breaking. The problem, these are not, not something new. These are not new. Uh, we have been to Antarctica twice. That means we have footprint in Antarctica as well. We have done uh, great surveys. Basically, so the is all the yes, way down south. Yes, it is. It and is. We did that too. Jinnah Research yes, Center yes. there. Mm -hmm. My institute yeah. developed that Jinnah station we visited there. We were more advanced in 40 years back than now. And I'm very, very optimistic and very supportive to Bidder Expo because they took an initiative and Sinis the also is a very visionary man and he took an initiative to revive our blue Conway potential because these were there, we addressed these potential before. We did some aquaculture practices, we did Antarctic expedition, uh, we have tidal energy project and we surveyed many our uh, entire coastal areas there. What we need to do this uh, in FAB event, what we are look forward, we have enough potential, a region enough potential as you mentioned Chabahar. We don't need to copy it down, we need to find collaborations stakeholders like B2 business, uh, we have to find the market. If the business is there, market is there, so their local market is going to be flourish very soon. So this is going to be a market showcase. The product which we have, the facilities which we have, so we can market these, these, these I things. I think the most favorite. important factor over here, no matter how you, you have got the Koinur diamond, but the thing is that uh, if you don't showcase it or if you don't even let people know that we have something to offer and if your uh, competitors all around you, they end up coming up with some better product. Yes, it is. That is what it has is. happened. I mean, you yes, just said that you know, we were advanced 40 years ago as compared to now. Yes. But Dr. Saab, that but is uh, the problem, right? No, we were uh, in so many things. <coughs> uh, let me respond to your question which you said the sister ports. For political consumption, these kind of terminologies or jargons are very important and it seems correct. But for real, reality, no. These are the sister ports and they are the competi competing ports. Your Karachi is competing port for the Dubai, for Abu Dhabi. Absolutely. Your Gwadar is for Chabaha. The only survival is fittest survival. You have to develop yes, yourself. You have to make your more, more, more services. attractive. And in that context, of course, your political stability is the key for it. And then investors comes, keeping in mind your long-term policy, not a short-term policy. Unfortunately, in Pakistan, we try to make a policy not more than four years or five years. This concept, we have to come out of this concept of five years. We have to come out of 10 to 15 years vision about the maritime. And then, yes, Chabar, Gawada, the way. If you start tracing both those will be going to compete. So why they permit it to build? Even if you, I can give you a very simple example. Go in any market here. There are two brothers shops. When the, you can say, uh, the person is trying to purchase something, both are making it attractive. It doesn't mean, but they're competing. Business strategy is, business, what is the business? It's just like a war, only the absence of the means of the wireless. Mm. So Pakistan has to think on these lines. We have to make ourselves more attractive. We have to come out of these kind of things. Let's say, I can give you an example. Our all media have been showing since last four days, situation in Karachi. The Karachi is sinking. The, if you see the Talking video. The floods, yes. uh, and if internationally, if somebody wants to invest in Karachi, what his mind will be going to guide? No. No. Similarly, if you have to think about the Gwadar, water is not available. Other what problems are available. For that and so. in, in, frankly speaking, proxy wars are going on. So we have to be very come out of these things. Of course, what the madam was saying and Ajasa was pointing out, we have a immense potential. And even if we are able to utilize it efficiently, even 10% of that potential, it will be equal to what you are you can say with your entire agriculture sector or your other sectors you are producing. Mm -hmm. 
But the problem is, as I said in the beginning, vision is there. Today I have first time seen that there was a, some kind of an attempt to materialize it, to make it a practical attempt. But I have to, still I am not confident. There were two ministers, defense minister, there was a maritime minister and there was a third production minister. There was a need to have an announcement or giving the assurance that what, which kind of the economic policy they are going to chalk out to make the people, let's say, eight months down the road, there will be a, this big mega event, which they talk at Maritime International Conference and Expo in Karachi. If you start working today, legislating, making them public, putting them in the media. Like the expo in Dubai, look at the way they marketed they, it. They started tw two years, exactly, three years. Exactly. If you start yeah. marketing now, whole city. Exactly. so we had a, today we started yeah. marketing, but without any, frankly speaking, no legislative support. There you go, that, sir. That is the only, still where the, I, I understand what is the limitation, where the state has a sea blindness, uh, these uh, policy makers or the people are not aware, even this initiative is again a big initiative. But from today onward, we have to work on these things. Absolutely. If you are not going for a practical sort of thing, if I say, oh, Iranian president came or ambassador is saying the system, yes, they are sister ports. If the others are saying, but I have no right to blame others. I have a right to Put investigate myself. What is my policy? Eliminate your threats. I can give you an example. Our applies on your... Uh, Potential, Look, basically. I came across, there is a maritime uh, training, you can say cadets academy in uh, Karachi. The cadets go there, get a training, but they don't have a jobs. Why your old ship industry is missing? If you have a big Bangladesh, 90, 50 years or more than 80 ships in the sea. And, 80 and you have seen that, of and also. <laughs> people have to keep in mind how these ships are important. <coughs> the Tamil movement, it was supported by Tamil zone with the different countries flag, six ships. And historically, if you go in the history, if the history is the guide, because you cannot understand your present without your past, Athens, or right. naval power. Ma'am, ma quick comment and then I'll uh, go to the lady. Yeah. You know, uh, when we are preparing for down the road, the blue economy, which we are trying to showcase our blue economy, but we need to promote one more thing. The security, safety, sustainability together. I think this is the most this important is the, aspect. The, 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 without this, we can't invite investor to our country. All right, sir. We have to handle our perception management. Because today, we had many people uh, who had come from Karachi for this event. And I asked them, OK, uh, how is the Karachi? He said, not as bad as being shown in the media. Yeah. Can you because imagine? the media is going to show you what they want you to see. Simple exactly. as that. That's so what, we have what to sells. Do. And just a quick comment, we have to compete and we have certain exclusive area. For example, a deep seaport, Chabahar or Dubai, they cannot compete in this particular domain with Gwala is a deep seaport. Exactly. So we, we have are lucky, to, but we need to. So we have to, you know, our exclusivity. We have to sell that. There you go, sir. Now, ma'am, coming to you. Interestingly, uh, not as a surprise, but uh, definitely, it's a huge money that we're talking about. That annually, when you talk about the ocean's contribution as far as uh, world economy is concerned, ma'am, that is 1.5 trillion, yes. T for trillion dollars. Yes. Even if you end up fetching 1% of that, 1%, that means you're talking about 15 billion dollars, ma'am, 15 billion. So, where are we? Where do we stand? I was just listening to all the panelists. So very quickly, before I answer to uh, your question, uh, when it comes to Gawadar, uh, just in two lines, we need to make Gawadar a transit and transshipment port. Until you do not focus on developing Gawadar as a transit and transshipment port, the country would not be able to uh, get benefit out of Gawadar port. Secondly, when it comes to Chabahar and Gawadar, we have all the good political, strategic, and economic reasons to say that Gawadar is somehow better option for the, all the shipping lines coming to the region to in the future. 
and once it will it will become a transit and transshipment port we will have an access to central asian states we will have an access to european uh, ports we will have an access to middle eastern ports as well as all the african ports uh, where china is right now uh, having a network of uh, trade uh, corridor and things next uh, uh, what you were what uh, dr zafar nawaz jaspal and what we were talking about dr nuzat that we are lacking sort of coordination um, the collaboration amongst the ministries the horizontal and vertical coordination so let me just assure um, to the audience and to all the panelists that this effort we have been working on priming for like past 4 months with badr expo this is a very significant step to address all these gaps we have already right. identified the themes and thematic the the conference and the uh, expo will be conducted in on the thematic basis you know we have different themes and we have identified regional and international partners and presenters but we will be working day, on you know you need you and, need a captain uh, to 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 yes. sort of uh, you know look after that ship I, that is pakistan I, but I, you need somebody like ardagan or mahatir mohammed honestly yes, with somebody I, with a vision I, 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 i personally feel that at least this realization has you know at least um, uh, uh, the thought is gaining acknowledgement amongst the policy makers amongst the decision makers also amongst the people and stakeholder that we should have a long term vision consistency Absolutely. of policies is very 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 important so based on all these issues this pymac will definitely be helpful in bridging the gap all right ma'am giving an all example right, of or that that's how we will inshallah develop a network of all right ma'am i'm so sorry to cut you here because we're totally running out of time but i would like to say thank you very much for your presence dog sir was a pleasure having you thank you very much ma'am and evim sir always good to see you, you sir and that's all we have uh, for this sir i'll see you inshallah tomorrow at 8:05 pm till then you take good care of yourself for that